Hi everybody, this is Stephen Holt with Precision Performance Fitness. I'm going to go over through a series of chains videos with you guys. This is going to be part one. This is just going to be why do we use the chains and a little bit of the science behind them. There are seven main reasons why we do choose to use chains in our facility here and why most people use chains in weightlifting application. The most effective and probably the most well-known reason to use chains is to accommodate the natural ascending strength curve. I'll go over that in a minute. The second reason that we use the chains is to increase acceleration when lifting, whether it be lifting in here for a certain specific movement or trying to get acceleration for on-field performance. Reason two for using the chains is to help teach the body to always accelerate and avoid deacceleration. Reason number three is overspeed eccentrics. We know that whenever we, the faster we eccentrically lift something, or in simpler terms, the faster we go down, the faster we're able to come up. Reason number four would be for isometrics. We know that at each joint angle throughout a movement, sometimes you can get stuck, and by isometrically working at that specific spot, you're able to break through that barrier. Chains allow us to work isometrically without having to push against an inanimate object. A lot of times you'll see people hold a push against a wall, or you'll see guys in a power rack that set up pins and they press the bar into the pins and hold it there. The chains allow you to actually get stuck in your own natural motion. After isometrics, the next reason where we would use chains would be to work around an injury. A lot of times when you get a certain injury to a primary mover, whether it be like your pecs or your hamstrings, it's really hard to work around those injuries, but chains allow you to kind of bypass the injured muscle and then work on all the secondary muscles around that. The other reason, the sixth reason why we use chains would be to increase the time under tension for any set or rep, which will allow us to get more muscle growth for the people where their area of concern is like bodybuilding or actually adding more muscle to the frame. And then the last reason that we would use chains would be for stability, to work the stabilizers, the elbows, you know, the tendons, the knees, to try and really work on actually learning to stabilize weight. We can set up chains so that they create an osculating pendulum effect very similar to what you would get with like a bamboo bar or kettlebells attached to bands. So those are the seven main reasons why we use chains. Once again, that's accommodating the strength curve, to build acceleration, to increase eccentric acceleration so that ultimately we're faster when we move concentrically. Fourth is isometrics. Fifth would be working around an injury. Sixth would be to increase time under tension for added muscle growth. And then the last reason would be to work the stabilizer muscles. All right, everybody, Stephen Holt here with Precision Performance. I'm talking to you guys a little bit about the reasons why we use chains. Reason one, accommodating the strength curve. Ascending strength curve, I should say. There's three different types of strength curves. The first is ascending. Ascending is whenever you do any type of extension of your joint, or the joint angle becomes greater throughout the range of motion of whatever movement you're doing. In much simpler terms, that's any time you're pushing or pressing anything. So any shoulder presses, any chest presses, any squats, any type of deadlift, or any type of extension of your elbow or of your knee. What the ascending strength curve says is that because of leverage and because of the amount of muscles that begin to help out as you go through the movement, the greater the extension or the greater, greater the joint angle, the more weight you're able to push and absorb and handle. So the amount of force that you can generate becomes greater throughout the lift. What that means, I'll use a squat for example. Let's say you say, Steve, how much can you squat? I say, well, I can squat 300 pounds. That means that I can full squat 300 pounds all the way down, all the way up. But I can maybe half squat 500 pounds, and let's say I can quarter squat 700 pounds. If I'm going to go do squats, the most weight I can put on the bar is only 300 pounds because that's all I can handle at the bottom part of the lift. Well, because of the ascending strength curve, we know throughout that lift I can actually handle more than 300 pounds. It's while I'm, hence why I'm able to half squat 500 and only quarter squat 700. Well, especially in sports, the most important part of the movement occurs in the last quarter part of the movement 
as you're doing the move, as you're exploding or running or pushing or pressing, whatever it is that you're doing. So we need to make sure that the last half and the last quarter part of whatever movement you're doing is overloaded. We're putting maximum muscle tension on all of your muscles to generate the most force possible at every single joint angle. So what that means is I'm squatting, I got my 300 pounds on the bar, I go down, I can handle 300 pounds here, but right here I can handle 500, but I only have 300 on the bar because that's all I can handle at the bottom. Right here I can handle 700, but I still only have 300 pounds on the bar. So I'm limiting my body throughout the top range of motion because I'm not putting the maximum amount of weight that it can handle. Now most people would say, well then, why don't you just put 700 pounds on the bar and just do quarter squats all the time? Well, because in athletic movements, and especially even in powerlifting movements and in any movement, you need to actually get the hip flexors and the, all the other muscles involved throughout a whole range of motion. So you need to train throughout the whole range of motion, but you also need to put the maximum amount of weight possible at each specific joint angle on the bar. Well, how in the world can we make a bar go from 300 pounds to 500 pounds to 700 pounds? The only way to do that and still keep all your natural ranges of motion, meaning you're not restricted by a machine, is to add either bands or chains to the bar. In this video, we're talking about chains. I'll explain the difference between bands and chains in another video. But if you come over here, you'll be able to see the chains are a 5 8 chain here, 3 8 chain here. Each one of the 5 8 chains is 8 centimeters long and weighs roughly a pound. So what that means is that with each 8 centimeters you go throughout your squat, you're increasing the amount of force that you need to produce by one pound for every single link. So if we throw a bunch of links on here, we can then accommodate our natural range of motion. I can squat, I can put 300 pounds on the bar so that when I'm in the bottom position I have my 300 pounds. By the time I'm halfway throughout my squat, I've pulled enough links off the floor to equal 500 pounds. And by the time I get to the quarter squat position, I've pulled enough links off the floor to equal 700 pounds. Hence, I would be accommodating my natural ascending strength curve. I'm increasing the amount of force, that, uh, the amount of weight that throughout the movement, therefore allowing me to need to create more force, putting maximal muscle tension on my body throughout the whole range of motion. This is the, one of the most crucial components to getting stronger and to getting more explosive. And without accommodating your natural ascending strength curve and all of your extension movements, you're really, really, really limiting your ability to improve. If you have any questions about what the ascending strength curve is, or any more questions about how to accommodate it, feel free to email me at Stephen, that's with a V, underscore Holt, H-O-L-T, at me.com, or you can contact anybody at precisionperformancefitness.com or 2pfit.com, and we would be more than happy to answer any questions you have about accommodating the ascending strength curve and what that actually is. Part two of why we use the chains is to build acceleration. People say, well, how do the chains help your body increase acceleration? Well, your body's natural defense mechanisms always tell you whenever you're lifting something, eventually you're going to have to stop it. So even though you're telling your body, let's take a bench press for example, you're telling your body, press the weight. Eventually your body knows you're going to get to this point, which is stop. Now, unless you throw the weight, your body will always accelerate throughout the entire movement, but you're probably not going to throw the weight doing a ballistics or plyometric style movement. So, the faster you try and accelerate the bar, the more your body's time your body's going to spend trying to deaccelerate it. It's going to say, wait, I don't want to go from like a thousand miles an hour to zero miles an hour in a split second. That's going to be really rough on my joints and my tendons and my body. So your body, your brain will send signals throughout your body as you press. Holy cow, eventually we got to stop this. So let's slow it down. Well, that slowing down point is what makes you slower. That's what puts sticking points in your lifts. And it's what 
really, really, really hinders your ability to actually accelerate when you're actually on the field performing. Your body always thinks, uh-oh, slow this down, it's going too fast, don't want to get injured. Well, the way that we can teach your body to accelerate throughout the whole entire movement with chains is because of the accommodating resistance, as you're trying to accelerate, since the weight is increasing, your body's always feeling a need to push against that weight. So it allows you to actually accelerate throughout the entire range of motion. Versus if we took chains off the bar, let's say we were to take the chains off the bar and just use, let's say, 225 pounds on a bench press, and you press it as many times as you could, as fast as you could. In theory, you think, I'm getting faster at pushing weight. I'm learning to accelerate this quicker because I'm pushing it quicker. But like I just explained, you're actually slowing your body down because your body th feels a need to have to de-accelerate even more since you're trying to accelerate even more. So by trying to push just dead weight faster, you're actually making yourself slower and it's going to make you slower when you're on the field or when you're trying to move big weight, just depending on what your goal is, whether you're an athlete or a power lifter or a strong man. You're going to get slower if you try and move a constant weight faster. It's just not going to work. There's lots of science that proves it. Since the accommodating resistance from the chains makes it to where your body always feels more weight and stress throughout the lift, it allows you to complete the lift, accelerating throughout the whole entire lift so that there's no de-acceleration occurs. Now there's going to be a little towards the end with bands. It actually teaches you to accelerate much more than chains. But like I said, bands will be for another video when I explain the difference between the two and go into bands a little bit more. Using the chains to accelerate also creates big time explosive and rapid, uh, rapid force development, which is really gonna make you way, way, way more explosive. If you just have a constant weight, you think, okay, I'm just gonna push this weight. Well, accelerating with the chains teaches you to push through something so that you become stronger and faster the further away from your body you get, whether it's regardless of the plane of motion you're pushing, whether you're overhead pressing, pushing it straight ahead in a bench press, squatting, deadlifting, doing any type of extension of the elbow and knee with chains in a speed fashion allows you to go throughout the lift accelerating with no deacceleration, which is the second main reason why we use the chains. The third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh reasons, which are the faster eccentric motion, isometrics, working around injuries, using the stabilizers, and then increased time under tension for muscle growth. I'm not gonna go into real great depth into those because they can get really specific, especially with the science behind them. A lot of people can even get confused just on the accommodating strength curve and the acceleration point. If you have any questions about accommodating the strength curve, how the chains actually create better acceleration and avoid deacceleration, and then of course, the isometrics, the fast eccentrics, the stability, all the other reasons, you can contact anybody at precisionperformancefitness.com or at 2pfit.com and we would be happy to explain to you all the theory, science, and application of those seven things and further in detail about how the chains work. Now that I gave you the brief idea of how we use the chains or why we use the chains, I'm going to show you how to actually set the chains up so that you're performing the movements correctly with the chain on the bar.